Hello, I'm Jay Norton. I'm the Soils Extension Specialist at the University of Wyoming Department of Ecosystem Science and Management. And I'm here today to talk to you about assessment, management, and restoration of Wyoming's soils. And mainly what I want to do is introduce the idea of a statewide soil health initiative and hope to get some more people involved in this conversation about, about doing this in Wyoming. There's a lot of parallels between soil health and human health. And uh, when I saw this cartoon, I thought, you know, this looks like a guy talking to a medical doctor. He says, give it to me straight, doc. How long do I have to ignore your advice? Well, I thought, you know, I've had conversation like that with producers where, um, you know, what I, what I think it represents is that they uh, producers typically know what a good soil looks like. They know how to manage to attain that good soil, but there's some constraints uh, preventing them from doing uh, what they know needs to be done. Just like with this guy, you know, how long, how long can I, I know I need to quit smoking cigarettes, but how long can I do that, doc? <clears throat> how long do I have to do that? Anyway, um, so I, I think of this as uh, a farmer and a soil scientist. Um, so soil health is the capacity of the soil to be used productively without adversely affecting its future productivity or the ecosystem or the environment. The, the short definition that I like is the capacity of the soil to function and pick your function. Uh, functions support different objectives or goals and, and one important goal for producers is sustainable production, right? So there's soil functions that support that. Other goals are, are um, ones that support the public in general. Environmental protection, um, there's soil functions that support environmental protection. There's ones that support wildlife habitat, water quality and quantity, and uh, carbon sequestration. The soil hoard holds the second largest pool <coughs> next to the, well, the, next to the oceans and, and the rocks, coal and, and oil. Uh, fossil carbon, but it, it, it holds a huge amount of carbon worldwide, um, something like seven or eight times the amount in the atmosphere and almost 250 times the amount that's emitted annually from fossil, burning fossil fuels, which is driving uh, climate change. So a little, a proportion, a small proportional change in the amount of soil organic matter being held in the soil could completely offset um, climate change emissions. So what do we mean when we talk about soil health? What, what does it look like? There, well, there's several principles that we talk about, anywhere from three to five. I'm gonna mention five. First is to do our best to eliminate bare soil. We know that um, stops erosion, but it also, there's a constant residue breakdown and, and additions of organic matter from soil being covered by plant residues. We wanna reduce disturbance. Every time we um, till the soil, it's like stirring the compost pile. It stimulates microbial activity that decomposes organic material in the soil, and that's lost as carbon dioxide to the, to the atmosphere. We want to have as diverse of rotations as we can. Um, longer rotations are better for the soil. More different kinds of roots in the soil support microbial diversity that drives nutrient cycling and healthy soils. Integrating livestock really supports that, uh, supports really all these other um, principles because you can, if livestock are part of the picture, you can have longer rotations, you can have per perennial phases for hay and pasture, you can have annual forages, um, so you're not just growing cover crops to cover the soil, you can actually graze that or hay it, so uh, having livestock be part of the picture creates um, a lot of uh, advantages and then then there's uh, manure and composted manure from livestock that can be added back to the soil. Another one I like to talk about is careful nutrient and irrigation water management. Uh, applying more water can offset degraded soil, right? Um, as soil organic matter is depleted, soil uh, soil water holding capacity goes down. We have to add more water more often. Same with uh, 
Same with fertilizers. They can either replace good management as nutrient supply goes down with soil health depletion. We can just add more mineral fertilizers. Um, but that further degrades the soil and causes a kind of downward spiral. But fertilizers can also be used as part of a sustainable management system that builds healthy soils. An example of soil health practices is this one where um, we analyzed the practice of converting to perennial grass or conservation reserve um, compared with converting from conventional tillage to no tillage and for a um, fairly short time at the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Extension Center in Lingle, Wyoming. Um, what we found was after seven years of perennial grass and 11 years of no tillage, there were significant increases in soil organic matter content. Um, we reported this in mega metric tons per hectare, which if you double that, that'd be 20 tons per acre of organic carbon in that soil. But that equates to approximately uh, this amount of soil organic matter. So the native prairie there that had never been plowed in eastern Wyoming there had about 3% organic matter in the surface soil. Um, the fully tilled, long-term heavy tillage soils had about 1% organic matter. And the no-till, seven years of no-till, or seven, wait, seven years of CRP and 11 years of no-till had increased that um, significantly. Um, so compared to the long-term historic tillage, heavy tillage system, these systems, the, the conversion to grass for seven years had accrued soil carbon at a rate of 500 pounds per acre over that seven years, where the, the no-till, so this difference here, had accrued about 250 pounds of carbon per acre for that 11, over that 11 years, per, per acre per year. And that, that's significant. That's more than, if we did that on all the soil, in all the agricultural soil in the world, that would more than offset global climate change. So it's, it's, um, it's interesting to me that, that these kinds of, we were able to measure these kinds of changes in a semi-arid dryland wheat fallow environment just by changing the vegetation management, going to no-till or going to perennial grass. So when we talk about assessing soil health, in that case I was talking about just looking at the total organic carbon, which equates uh, or is, is proportional to the soil organic matter content. So those are soil organic matter, soil organic carbon are two very important uh, parameters that you'll see repeated over here. Um, but the, the parameters we want to look at depend on our goals and objectives for the soil. Um, there's important production objectives, like I mentioned, that are supported by these functions. There's six main soil functions that we talk about most of the time. Uh, water, water property, water regulating functions, nutrient cycling functions, soil structure, physical stability, and resistance and resilience functions. Um, so if the, if the goal is environmental protection, a lot of these same functions support environmental protection, protection with the addition of sort of filtering and buffering for, for protecting water quality um, and functions that support biodiversity and habitat. Waste cycling is another goal um, that, that could be used and, and so remediate or cycling toxic waste. Uh, so a lot of these same functions are, um, support that goal. So depending on which functions we're most interested in, that's how we choose indicators. So we might want to look at microbial biomass for nutrient cycling, mineralizable nitrogen. So that's the, 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 the amount of nitrogen that's going to become available to crops over a season from decom decomposition of organic material. <clears throat> Water holding capacity, organic matter, organic carbon, organic matter. Those, those are parts of most functions. In Wyoming, 
one part of an effort would be to really develop and select these indicators that really tell us about functions in our particular semi-arid agroecosystems. So, introducing this idea of a Wyoming Soil Health Initiative, and I think the goal here would really be to bring the entire Wyoming agricultural community together around soil health, recognizing that it's it's a public good and support, you know, it's, it's a win-win-win situation, really. Um, we'd be talking about croplands, rangelands, forests. Uh, we could include reclamation and, and that, that community as well. Uh, it, but it would really represent a broad partnership across the ag community, including producers, the Farm Bureau, stock growers, Wyoming Department of Ag, and the Natural Resource Conservation Service. Conservation districts, I think, would be a key player. Um, BLM and Forest Service, major landowners in our state, um, commodity groups, conservation groups, and others you're probably thinking about that are left off. Um, we wouldn't know what, what the Soil Health Initiative would look like until we start meeting and, and formulating it, but I'm going to talk about a few things that I, I think uh, a direction it could go or, you know, and I think we want to have some some principles um, that we'd stick to. One would be that it would be producer centered. Would, producers would drive the boat. That we'd have a producer advisory committee that would really tell us what's important, what's not, and, and which way we need to go. It would have to be science based, and it would have to provide only voluntary solutions, incentive based voluntary practices. So creative ways to get the word out and get those on the ground. I think that it could end up with three, or start with three components. And it could look like this, it could look different, but three interconnected components um, might be the start. And these might be working groups that we start on in this next coming year or so. Um, a science and practice working group that would support both on the ground implementation and outreach efforts, outreach and extension efforts that would support the other two. And then ultimately on the ground implementation. So this science and practice working group, I think, would be looking at, number one, soil health testing and assessment for Wyoming systems, sort of weeding out all the possible assessment techniques and, and indicators to look at the ones that best represent healthy soils in Wyoming. Um, and then use those to support an inventory of soil health. And that would give us two things that would identify exemplary production systems that could be benchmarks or could represent the potential um, for these soil health indicators. It could identify areas with potential for improvement. So where, where are we going to get the most bang for a buck by implementing soil health systems? Um, and then a third component of this science and practice group would be developing and assessing best management practices. So looking at the way the way I, I just showed you that study that increased soil organic carbon after a few years of no-till or perennial grass. Uh, looking at practices like that and their effect is, their effects on soils of different different soils in different cropping systems or uh, rangelands or livestock systems. An out, outreach and extension group could first of all facilitate surveys and listening sessions that would really guide all the other actions. And uh, it could publicize success stories. It could facilitate demonstration sites on farms and at UW research stations. And it could sponsor field days and really, you know, get people together to uh, talk about soil health practices and, and their values. Uh, and on, on the ground implementation effort, I think would enhance the, one thing it would do would be to enhance the capacity of existing programs to get technical assistance out there. Um, the Natural Resources Conservation Service and the Wyoming Department of Ag already have programs that support soil health. Uh, a statewide effort of the ag community could just enhance the capacity of that. Uh, develop innovative incentive strategies for, for helping farmers to, to, to make these transitions. And bring established programs, for example, the Illinois Star, Star Program, the Saving Tomorrow's Agricultural Resources, awards points for 
soil, soil health practices that are known to improve soil health on those soils and those systems <clears throat> to producers that, that implement those practices. And they, you know, they get a sign that says, I have four stars. I, this field has four stars or five stars. <clears throat> and then the Soil Health Partnership is a, a nonprofit organization in the Midwest that has over 200 sites where they're collecting data every year to assess changes in soil health. And they're, they're running trials on farms. And um, in Colorado, this Healthy Soils Initiative there is talking to the Soil Health Partnership about moving west and, and including Colorado soils in their, in their program. And that's something we could do in Wyoming. <clears throat> so the next steps, actions I think uh, that I want to push on here in the coming months would be to start to meet, to get together a meeting of people that have, have uh, contacted me and are interested. And I hope that uh, some of you watching this will, will go ahead and do that. Um, the first thing I think we'd want to start to plan is these listening sessions and surveys to find out what producers are already doing, what they'd like to do, what assistance they know would drive adoption of soil health practices. And then informing, you know, those same surveys and listening sessions would also serve to inform the Wyoming Ag community about this effort. And then look at funding from grants and federal, federal, state, and private grants to, to get this thing off the ground, hire some help, get it going. Um, I just want to talk for a second about some existing uh, and proposed initiatives in, in Western states. The Colorado Collaborative for Healthy Soils is a huge effort in Colorado. Um, they're, they're in planning stages now. Uh, they have working groups on science and practice, incentives and policies, knowledge sharing, stakeholder engagement. They've had listening sessions that's driving their boat, and they, they have a farmer advisory committee. Uh, they have been successful at getting grants from both federal, state, and philanthropic foundations. And they're in the process of working with legislators to develop legislation that would really kind of make the effort permanent. Um, it would ensure that Colorado Department of Agriculture has the authority to establish programs like this. Washington State uh, has a new soil health initiative that's underway. It's a strong partnership between the Washington Department of Ag, Washington State University, and the Washington Conservation Commission. Um, they, they're doing inventory, they're, they're funding demonstrations, uh, they have farmer grant programs and workshops. Now, they don't have any money yet, but they're doing workshops. Uh, WSU has a lot going on. They've just recently passed two bills in the legislature that will, um, that do establish mechanisms for appropriations if, if they decide they want to go that way. Hawaii has a strong program that is, um, a uh, collaboration um, builds the capacity of conservation districts for soil health planning. So just integrates more soil health planning into their conservation planning programs. And California has a, a very strong program that um, where California Department of Food and Ag defines practices that they know support and build soil health. They provide incentives. They fund farmer grants and um, they fund on the, on the ground demonstration programs on farms. This is just an example from Hawaii of their, their uh, soil health scorecard. Uh, they analyze the, um, different properties and, and come up with a score based on functions and goals and, and soil properties. They have unique soils in Hawaii and uh, so they need a unique system and a unique program. And so this is the kind of thing um, I'm thinking about for Wyoming to help get soil health on the ground. And with that, I'd like to join, I'd like to invite, you know, everyone listening to uh, contact me and join this conversation about developing a unique soil health initiative for Wyoming. Thanks very much for your attention.